you go to hear the word. You know, sauti yako. And I speak to the Lord in preparation to hear the word. Father, we thank you for this morning. For this is the day that the Lord has made. As we enter the gates of your courts, O oh God, we thank you because you have prepared us for this day. As you have prepared a table for each one of us, dear Master, I pray that we shall dine of this eternal bread with you. Open the heart of each one of us that the entrance of your word will bring life, will bring light, and will bring hope. This we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Give the Lord a hand clap. Give the Lord a better hand clap. Amen. Amen. We can have our seats. Thank you, praise and worship team, for having started us off. God bless you big. Uh, I welcome you all to this morning service to share the word of God and to be blessed of him. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Are you happy this morning? Thank you. Welcome. I want us to go to the word of God in the few minutes that we have. We've been having a series of teachings about commanding our destiny. Commanding our destiny. And this has been a series for this month. Which is almost coming to the end. So I wish to build up a little more on top of what has been taught previously. Praise the Lord. Amen. And as good students, I can see you have your pen and your notebook. So for those of us who may not know my name, I'm Pastor Lucas Maundu. I'm born again. And I love the Lord Jesus Christ. Let's, uh, by way of introduction, we turn to the book of John, chapter number 12, verse number 20 to 22. John, chapter number 12. Verse 20 to 22. Now there were some Greeks among those who went up to worship at the feast. Verse 21. They came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, with a request. Sir, they said, we would like to see Jesus. Verse number 22. Philip went to tell Andrew. Andrew and Philip in turn told Jesus. Praise the Lord. Amen. Now, there was a feast in Jerusalem. And Jesus was there. And some Gentiles had also come to attend that feast. The text highlights 
that there were some Greeks who had also come to worship. Praise the Lord. Amen. But these Greeks, they had a different uh, uh, mission. Other than coming to worship, they had also come to see Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. As we come to worship, as we come as a congregation to worship, it would be far much better and a bigger blessing that we experience this Jesus. That we come to worship this Jesus. Praise the Lord. So the Greeks came to Philip with a request that we desire to see Jesus. And uh, Philip went to Andrew. So the two of them went to Jesus and told him, you have some special visitors who would want to see you. Praise the Lord. Amen. So between the Greeks and the Jesus, there was Philip and Andrew. This morning as we begin our teachings, if we would allow people to see Jesus, we shall be blessed. Ours is to get out of the way and not be an obstacle for anyone who wants to see Jesus this morning. So as we begin our service, I challenge you, wherever you are seated, the neighbor you are seated with, if he can be a block for you to see Jesus. Look for another neighbor who would help you worship Jesus and who would help you see Jesus because it would be in vain to come to a Sunday worship service and not experience Jesus. So it's not just about worship. It's not just about another feast but it's about him. Praise the Lord. So as we go to command our destiny, let our focus be on Jesus. The author and the finisher of our faith. Therefore, let me define a few terms as a way of repetition. You know, our destiny is controlled by God. The things that happen for us to reach our destiny, they are controlled from the supernatural. The things that happen to you now and that will be happening in our future, God is in control. Praise the Lord. Amen. Therefore, as we move on to our destiny, we have a destination. There is that place where we are aiming to reach. Jesus one time said, I'm going to prepare for you a place. Hallelujah. I'm going to prepare for you a place that is about the eternity. We have a destination called the eternity. And each one of us should prepare to reach there. But while on earth, we also have another temporal destination. There is that place that you dream of getting to. There is that 
there is that person you would wish to be on this planet. So those are two levels of destination. The place where Jesus went us to prepare and the place and the person you want to be while on planet earth. So destination is about the place where someone is going. Praise the Lord. Therefore we have two levels of destination. There is that eternal place Jesus went to prepare for us. And there is that temporal uh, place or destination we want to reach while on planet earth. And we desire all of us to be there. So where you are going or what you are going to become will depend on your undeviating prosecution the place you are going or that person that God wants you to be will depend on how you prosecute the, the divine will of God in your life. Praise the Lord. What you are going to become the place where you want to go because we are going to reach there will depend on how you prosecute the will of God in your life. Deuteronomy chapter number 8 verse 1. Deuteronomy chapter number 8 verse 1. Give me King James version. Deuteronomy chapter 8 verse number 1. All the commandments which I command this day shall ye observe to do that ye may live and multiply and go in and possess the land which the Lord swear unto your fathers. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Are we together? God is commanding the Israelites. So the first person who came about commanding destiny was God himself. He commanded the Jews that I'm taking you from the land of Egypt and I'm taking you to a destination called the land of Canaan. So there is some movement from point A to point B. And God gives the Israelites commands. So they are commanded. The same way God has commanded us today. And in the mind of God, His commands were to be progressive. Because he had begun, he was to finish. But Moses and the people of God, they had to pick that command. They had to pick those ten commandments. And then using the ten commandments, they were to participate they were to participate with God in that journey of getting to their destination. So Moses is given a command. The Israelites are given a command. They, they pick the command. And then with the command, God is telling his people 
Go and eliminate the Amalekites. Go and do away with the Jebusites. Go and eliminate the seven nations that are greater than you. But using my command, so as he command our destiny, it is not our idea that we are working with. It is not our command that we are working with. Ours is to use the command of God and tell the Amalekites get out of our way because we are heading somewhere. We are becoming the chosen royal generation of God. There is that which we are becoming. We are becoming the chosen people of God. So, so anything to stand our way to prevent us from becoming that which God has in mind we must eliminate it this morning. Praise the Lord. Today we do not have the Amalekites. Today we do not have the Jebusites. Though we have spirits. We have demon spirits. We have patterns that work against us in our families. We have satanic powers in territories. We have mountains that stand our way. But we have command from God. Ours is to release that command and to do that verbal communication and I speak to that mountain because it shall come out of our way. Praise the Lord. Therefore, in the process of becoming, we have to take full responsibility for our destiny. Praise the Lord. We have to take full responsibility for our destiny. I ask all of us this morning, what do you dream of becoming? You know, it is good to dream again. A man by the name Joseph, he would dream at night. Praise the Lord. But when you looked at Joseph during the day and compare him with his brothers, he would look a very small man. But within his spirit, in his dream, he's a governor. One day, the sun, the moon, and the stars must bow to him. But he has to go through a process before he becomes that governor. He has to fight. He has to say no by the grace of God. He has to say no to sin. Praise the Lord. He has to go through Potiphar's house for him to become that great man. Praise the Lord. Someone one time wrote and said, the greatness of a man, the greatness of a man is determined by the cause he lives for. Hallelujah. Amen. The greatness of a man is determined by the cause he lives for. And his willingness to pay the price to achieve it with joy. So the greatness of what we are becoming. As I speak to us this morning, in our midst, I know we have men of God. We have great evangelists. You dream one day I'll preach to thousands. We have great men, business moguls. 
you desire to build that business empire but you must pay a price to that greatness willingly with joy praise the lord praise the lord praise the lord I want us to look at two points that will help us get to that greatness, great to that destination, become that great man. John chapter number 12, verse 23 and 24, amplified version. Amplified version. We are commanding our destiny. We are going somewhere. We are becoming. But the following two points will help us. And Jesus answered them, the time has come for the Son of Man to be glorified and exalted. I assure you, most solemnly, I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just one grain. It never becomes more but lives. Amen, amen na wambia chembe ya ngano isipuanguka katika inji ikafa ukaa hali hiyo hiyo peke yake bali kifa utoa mazao mengi It becomes more but lives by itself alone but if it dies underline that it produces many others and the yields a rich harvest Ukaa hali hiyo hiyo peke yake upige mstari hiyo bali kifa utoa mazao mengi you know, Jesus has the answer this morning. We remember Jesus came for one cause. To seek and to save the lost. And to become that savior. But before he became that savior, he had to go through a process. He is God, man. Without sin. But he had to die. He had to die. To save us from sin. So we follow the example of our Lord Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. Amen. And remember Jesus. It is after he died and he went to Hades. It is only then that he took the key. After taking the key, he hands it over to men like Peter and he tells them, using these keys, using this authority, you can agree you can bind. You can lose. And whatever you agree on earth, it shall be agreed in heaven. Whatever you persecute on earth, it will be persecuted in heaven. So our main point here is, we have to die to the self. We have to die to the self. If we are going to get the key, the key that will give us the power and the authority to execute and to implement and to bind and to lose and to get moving forward. Praise the Lord. Before Jesus died, he is the son of man. He is the son of Joseph. He is God man. He goes through the process of suffering. He dies. He resurrects. But in resurrection, 
He resurrects glorified. Praise the Lord. Amen. Jesus without sin had to die. Paul tells us in Romans we have to mortify everything that is of flesh. We have to die to the self so that we can change seasons. So that we can change the programming. So that we can move from one chapter to another of life. And you know we are dying to the works of the flesh. For example, if I've been an angry man most of the times, if I struggle with anger, if I struggle with the anger, remember it was anger and a bitterness which made Moses not to reach the land. Praise the Lord. You know Moses one time was so pissed up. He was so angry with the children of Israel. Yet God had promised him that they are going to move to that land. But because the element of anger in Moses, in our context we may say it had not died completely in him. He failed to reach the land. So what is it that can make you and I? I have to die to it. I have to put it to death. Praise the Lord. Amen. And the Bible says, unless this seed falls to the ground and it dies, it remains alone. We are in a season of sowing seeds. Praise the Lord. And unless a maize seed you know, a maize seed being a white in color with a hard coating with some different parts within it. Praise the Lord. Unless it dies and it is sown under some soil and it is forgotten after some time. And whatever happens below that soil, nobody knows. Praise the Lord. Amen. Sometimes the Lord takes us through a death process. Well, you die to the self. And sometimes man forgets about you. Even your own friends may forget about you. Even your very close relatives may forget about you. It is only you within your spirit and your heart. Who knows the programming the Lord is doing within your spirit? Praise the Lord. Amen. It's a very painful experience to die. But we thank God even if that night endures for a long time a night is coming when you shall resurrect and you shall rise up with a great harvest. Praise the Lord. I was meditating on this scripture. Dying to self. You know, you can take yourself, for example, through a prayer and a fasting session. Call it 40 days. Call it three days. You say, I am going to mortify the flesh. This thing that I've been struggling with, I come to you, Jesus. Help me to be programmed afresh. Though that as I resurrect, I will walk a free man. I will walk in freedom. I will walk in a 
new season. And it is during that time when you get transformed. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. You know one time Peter, John and James and Jesus climbed the mountain for prayer. And while they were there, Elijah and Moses showed up. You know, it is so beneficial to die to self. It is beneficial to desire this life of transformation. So that you don't just come to worship. So that you don't just come to another feast. So that you don't just say I'm a member of CCI Sultan. A beautiful church. You worship and you don't experience Jesus. One thing that prevents people from experiencing his glory is because we have not died to self completely. Or we have allowed allowed some relationships to hinder us from seeing Jesus. So in this mountain of transfiguration, Peter, John, and the James, they had an experience of interacting with the divine. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. When you walk with Jesus, when you walk in his glory, that time you have left Peter and Andrew behind. You don't mind about who is seated next to you in a service. I thank God for the praise and the worship team. As you connect us to see Jesus, please get out of the way. Allow us to see Jesus as a member in the congregation. Don't mind about who is seated next to you. Desire to see Jesus. Experience that glory. So when Peter and James are in that glory, they begin some communication with the divine. May I say this as we leave that point? Once you die to the self and you begin an experience with Jesus and there is glory, the Bible says, allow me to paraphrase, you begin interacting with the righteous men who even went before us the fire of Elijah you begin interacting with that fire praise the Lord you begin interacting with the law that Moses came carrying the second time because you have died to self you begin interacting with the righteous men. You get a new desire and a thirst. You begin, you begin asking yourself eternal questions. What is this fire that Elijah interacted with? You step into that realm. Praise the Lord. And that the key is dying to self. Because out of that experience, the Bible says, after Jesus' resurrection, he came with a key. He came with a key. He was given a key. You cannot get that key until you die to self. And with that key, with that word, with the command you get out of that realm, you come with a word. You come with a command. And you say to the devil, out of my way, in your family, whatever has been aborting your miracles, you put them to death. And you go to your destiny. Give Jesus a hand clap. Praise the Lord. 
So let's make a serious decision to die to self. Point number two. Develop a life of intimacy with the Holy Spirit. You know, sometimes we know how to plan life. We know how to put things in order. We are professionals. In all areas, you can make things work for you. One time, Chinua Achebe, a writer, wrote and said, in my high school, I did a book called uh, Things Fall Apart. He wrote and said, when the center cannot hold, things fall apart. You may be very smart in putting things together to work. But if you do not have an intimacy with the Holy Ghost, you may find things are falling apart. They are not fixing themselves the way they should. The book of John chapter 1 verse 1 the Bible says in the beginning was God was the word. In Genesis it says and the spirit of God praise the Lord. Amen. There was such an intimacy of this word and the God the Father and the God, the Holy Spirit, you would not differentiate who is who. Because Jesus, the one, had such an intimate relationship with the Father. Jesus one time and said, I and my Father are one. And the Spirit of God, we are one. Because we have one God. Today, the Spirit of God dwells in us. It is good we have a relationship with Him. But we need to go beyond a relationship. We get to another realm of our intimacy. Praise the Lord. Like the way we are seated here, I have a relationship with Pastor Steve, right? He's a good friend of mine. I know much about him. But the level of relationship cannot be compared to the relationship I have with my wife. I have a more intimate relationship with my wife. You know, I only need to make her a call. And I listen to that tone. And I will tell there is joy. There is joy. There is happiness. Just by making a call. Praise the Lord. I only need to see her. Even without much stories. There is so much communication. Praise the Lord. I can talk to her. She can talk back to me. But you know, I cannot enter that level of intimacy with everybody. It is called a one-to-one -one intimacy. And that is what the Lord wants us to build up. That I can talk to the Holy Ghost. That I need to surrender to Him. And ask Him to show me the way. That intimacy comes out of your surrender to God. And you acknowledge, and you acknowledge Him. And to tell him you are my helper. You are my teacher. Give me the bearing to my destiny. Praise the Lord. 
you know the Holy Ghost was there before foundations were laid. We talk about foundations in our families. The Holy Ghost was there when those foundations were laid. So when you make a link with him, you make a link with the Alpha. Amen. Let me put it this way. Like for example when we are worshipping during a service and then you have a link with the Holy Ghost. You know, he was there in the beginning. So he can interact with you of things that were in the beginning. He can reveal to you he, he can reveal to you those things. Do you talk about my grandfather cast our family? Do you talk of patterns there which were laid as foundations before you were there? Get a link with the Holy Ghost. He knows how to unwrap those things. The Bible says the Spirit of God was continually at war with the Amalekites. Get a link with the Holy Ghost. He shall be at war with the Amalekites. Get a link with the Holy Ghost. He is at war with whatever is disturbing us. And then let's walk in that uh, intimacy. That means we have to get to another level of knowing God. Jesus prayed and said, Father, give them to know you, God. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. My time is up. I feel we have gotten those two points. As we command our destiny, as we command our destiny, we have said, we need Jesus above it all. Praise the Lord. Amen. If Peter and Andrew, if relationships can make you not see Jesus, get to know how to swerve around them and go to Jesus. Because there is the place where you are going. Jesus went to prepare for you a place. That is about the eternal. Here on earth, there is that which I want to become. But it will be if I'm going to execute the will of God according to the word of God. Lastly, we have said these two points. The things that will help me work out this salvation is to die to the self. Then I begin interacting with the supernatural. Just the way Peter, John, and James, they interacted with Elijah. God will give me an access by his spirit to start, in, to start interacting with the righteous men and interact with whatever they interacted with. Elijah interacted with the supernatural of fire so I can begin walking the spirit of Elijah and I command rains to rain and I command clouds to shut up praise the Lord Amen. lastly we have said let us develop a life of intimacy with the Holy Ghost and that one is achieved by when you surrender during the service let us surrender to him because without his help our commanding and our execution and our implementation of the word is in vain the word must become spirit because the things we are dealing with they are spiritual praise the Lord amen God bless you. Thank you, Bishop, for giving me the opportunity to speak the word.
Amen. Welcome praise and worship team. Amen. Amen. Tunaweza kumpigia pastor wetu Makofi katika jina la Yesu Kristo. Mpatie